Medieval times, the home of guilds and monasteries, the era of crusades and cathedrals, a landscape of castles and peasants. Oh, and did I mention some hard, hard winters? In an age where the only warmth found would likely be a nobleman's manor or castle, medieval winters for most were a truly testing time of year. The test would start even before winter. If the months leading up had produced a weak harvest, winter could be a matter of life and death. Though with this bleakness in mind, there were medieval winter traditions we share to this day. The appreciation of hot food in the coldest times, wrapping up accordingly, playing out in the snow, and wouldn't you know it, generosity and goodwill from the most unexpected of neighbors. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we look at what it took to survive medieval winter. Like any and every winter, survival in medieval times required warming and filling food. The arrival of winter was something close to an event in winter times. The entire autumn would be spent preparing for long months ahead. Preservation of harvest was the priority up until late September, when Michaelmas arrived on September 29th. As soon after, the land would be entirely unworkable. The food to make one last and survive medieval winter was likely pottage. This staple was available to all, a fundamentalist stew of vegetables and grains all boiled up in a pot. At the time, eating raw fruit was something to desperately avoid, so even fruit would be thrown in for the boil. Additions to the winter stew to see you through would include beans, roquette, parsley, and herbs, and when acquired, even salted pork or eggs and cheese. However, for those in nobility, winter was more an inconvenience of the conditions. They were still chowing down on the game, mutton, cheese, red wine, and grapes. Wow, so rich you don't even notice winter. There you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. In the medieval era, a time a good while before central heating, clothes were more important than ever. That's not to say medieval populations just sat and bore the cold. It wouldn't be uncommon to find a hearth fire in the average home. While a viable source of heat, the result would often be an incredibly smoky home, warmed but not all that comfortable from being so. The hearth fireplace would be ventilated with a hole in the roof, but ironically, this prototype heating system still left people wrapped up indoors. Medieval folk would wrap up much like ourselves. Scarves, cloaks, and gloves would be worn by all. Furthermore, medieval folk dealt with the same impracticalities of layers we deal with today. Wool was a favorite but it tends to itch. So, much like us now, layering up in medieval times required wool, but also a fine layer of linen underneath. Even back then, protecting one's extremities from the cold was a keen priority. Medieval hand warmers were used at the time, hollowed metal containers that held hot coals within. Just because it got really cold outside and the fields couldn't be worked, that didn't mean medieval folk didn't have fun. Sure, they were a fair way off from being able to wrap up in a deep sofa and semi-hibernate in front of Netflix, but they still had fun and games. Early ice skating could be found back then with skates constructed of horse shin bones or polished wood. Snowball fights and making snow angels were a favorite too, along with sledding, just like today. Though not all fun and games in winter took place outside. Board game classics like chess and backgammon would take place by the hearth fireplace though that was more likely for the everyday folk. The nobility would still find the means to go boar hunting in the depths of the cold. Yes, specific to medieval times, the hunting of wild boars was a staple and wintertime favorite of the nobility. The importance of wild boars as desired hunting prey goes back to antiquity. Ancient Greek and Roman art show boar hunting as normal, though deer were likely seen as more noble animals for sport. Many helmets of the Anglo-Saxon time before medieval Europe were decorated with a boar aesthetic. Medieval times held the boar in high regard. It was an animal of great aggression and brutality. This was hunting an animal to be feared. Art from the time shows the hunt taking place on horseback and the weapons used ranging from long swords to spears. Though a careful reminder, this was for the nobility. Records of the early medieval period show clergy and noblemen demanding boar parts and carcasses as tribute from the common folk. 
oh, the nobility always hogging the spoils. Surviving medieval winter wasn't the easiest of tasks, and if you look at their common cold remedies, you'd count yourself lucky not to catch one. Some centuries back, medical knowledge was not the ever-growing encyclopedia we are blessed with today. It was far, far more rudimentary. The medical approach to the common cold at the time was to remove the mucus from the head. Now, let me just stop you there. They didn't mean surgically, thank God. A rather pungent mix of cabbage leaves, black beetroot, and honey would be mixed together before being blasted up the poor soul's nose. <laughs> People would be told to avoid wine or go outdoors in the event of falling ill with a cold. Outside of the provincial herbal remedies for sneezes and sniffling, Surviving the cold was a matter of people finding their deepest gumption. From 1300 into the Middle Ages, most of the Northern Hemisphere would face the conditions of a little ice age for the coming centuries. Pneumonia was likely an outcome for many of the poorest and most vulnerable people. The Baltic Sea and the River Thames would famously be depicted as entirely frozen over in art from the time. Surviving medieval winter, let alone falling foul of diseases or miasma, was down to luck supplies, and maybe even a generous nobleman living locally. Every home decked with the green of holly and ivy, Christmas was a welcome respite to the hard slog of medieval winter. Comfortably the lengthiest holiday of the calendar year, the 12 days of Christmas, were the time when not a soul in the land worked, and all were to be drunken, merry, and well-fed. Christmas for the peasantry was a type of great freedom like no other. Attending Christmas Mass, collecting the Yule Log for the home, and decorating the home accordingly was the norm. While rare delicacies of boiled meat may have been procured for the celebration, most peasant Christmases were usually fueled by home-brewed ale, and plenty of it. There would be entertainment come medieval Christmas time for all to enjoy. Monks would tour residences performing plays of passages from the Bible, and it wouldn't end there. Mummers were a medieval pantomime troupe, accompanied by musicians who would perform on streets and even in homes throughout the land. Though for everyday medieval men and women, the grandeur of Christmas was really up to the local nobility. Yes, even at the peak of winter and the goodwill of Christmas time, the feudal class system of medieval Europe remained remarkably intact. Local nobility, a lord, would extend themselves at Christmas time, comfortable in the castles and manors, receiving expensive garments and jewelry for Christmas gifts. Gift giving was a part of a noble person's festive traditions too. It would not be uncommon for a lord to invite a member of the peasantry to come to dine at their Christmas table. The serf in question was permitted to be joined by a friend and for the duration of two candles being burnt, they could stuff their faces to their heart's content and take as much with them on their way out. Yet even this open sweetness and giving has some bitterness to it. In preparation for the Lord's Christmas table, well, it wasn't the Lord putting in all the effort. Local peasants would still be fronting the bill with extra rent to assure eggs, bread, and hens would be served. Yes, the 12 days of Christmas and its freedom for all was not necessarily all that true. Even if the local peasantry were not working on the local nobility's estate, they could still be called to work it. A manor could have fences in need of mending, animals requiring care, a genuine log of work for people to take on during their yearly break. That's not to say it was all about the land and the animals, repair work around the Lord's Manor could be roped into this local service. So there you go, Christmas for some and not so much for others in medieval times. This is History on Fleek. And we'll see you next time. Ho, 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 ho.